Today is Valentine's Day, and I thought that was really um, uh, something special when God gave me these scriptures. And uh, I'm going to be reading in Ezekiel chapter 20, and I'm going to be reading uh, verse 18, and verse 18 through 20, and then I'm going to be jumping over to verse 27. And the title of my message today on Valentine's Day is, I love you. Or is it just the benefits? I love you, but is it just the benefits? Now, I read these scriptures, and I'm going to read them right now, and then I'm going to share with you what God spoke to me. Starting in the 18th verse, chapter 20 of Ezekiel. I'll give you a few more minutes to get there. Y'all got it? Chapter 20, verse 18th verse. Amen. All right. It says here in the 18th verse, But I said to their children in the wilderness, Do not walk in the statues of your fathers, nor observe their judgment, nor defile yourselves with their idols. I am the Lord your God. Walk in my statues, keep my judgments, and do them. Hallow my Sabbaths, and they will be a sign between me and you, that you may know that I am the Lord your God. You can be seated. Now I'm going to jump over here to verse 27. And it says, Therefore, son of man, speak to the house of Israel and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, In this too your fathers has blasphemed me by being unfaithful to me. When I brought them into the land concerning which I had raised my hand in oath to give them. Did you hear what I said? He said, I raised my hand in an oath to give them. And they saw all the hills and the thick trees. There they offered their sacrifices and provoked me with their offerings. There they also sent up their sweet aroma, and poured out their drink offering. Uh Then I said to them, what is this high place to which you go? So its name is called Bama to this day. Therefore say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, are you defiling yourselves in the manner of your fathers and committed holotry? I believe the King James Version calls it whoredom. According to the abominations. For when you offer your gifts, make your sons pass through the fire, you defile yourselves with your idols, even to this day. So shall I be inquired of by you, O house of Israel? As I live, says the Lord God, I will not be inquired of by you. What you have in your mind shall never be. When you say... We will be like the Gentiles, like the families in our other countries, serving wood and stone. Now, let me set the stage for you before I start. When I read these scriptures, God began to speak to me about a couple pastor friends I got. And before they got saved, they've been pastoring now for about 20-some years, maybe 30 years. Before they got saved and delivered and set free and became pastors, they were both heroin addicts. And out of her own mouth, she told how she had an $800 a day habit. And how she got her finances for her habits was she was a prostitute. And God began to speak to me on an $800 a day habit. How many men did it take to get that $800? And that's just one street walker, Brother Keith. Now you times that by three or four street walkers. That may not have had an 800, but maybe a four or a six. And he spoke to my spirit and said, Johnny, all these men that went and picked up these street walkers, he said, you can well bet believe when they left the house, they was kissing somebody on the cheek and telling them that they loved them. Huh? Because there ain't that single, that many single men out there. And, and, and let's go a step further. I wonder how many more are churchgoers, if you want to dare to step there with me. 
We're talking about kissing somebody on the cheek and saying that I love you. And before they walk out the door, but they wasn't in love with them. They may have been in love with the clothes that were on her back smelling fresh from the laundry that she did for them. They may have been in love with the breakfast that they sat down that she got up and fixed for them before they went out the door. They may have been in love with the kids that she labored and carried for him. He may have been in love with the meal that he sat down the night before at the table and ate that she prepared for him. But he was not in love with her. Huh? The story I just read you was children walking in a promised land, a land that God gave them. It said that had great hills in it and full of thick trees, but yet they wasn't loving on the one that gave these things to them. They was out whoring themselves out to other idols and loving something else that could not give them the hills or the thick trees. I love you, baby, or is it just the benefits? Huh? See, my Bible tells me. <laughs> let's, let's go over here. Let me, let me go over to Exodus. We'll go to Exodus chapter 1. Um, I'm sorry, Exodus chapter 20. We'll start in the first verse. He said, and God spoke these words saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them, for I the Lord your God am a jealous God, visiting your visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. Yep. And God began to speak to me about a relationship that you claim that you might have with God. And if anybody's been married any length of time knows, I don't care if it's the female or the male, if you want your spouse to make you happy, and I'm going to keep it PG as I can, if you want to get a back rub from your wife, you're going to have to do something to make her feel like putting her hands on your back and rubbing your back. See, it's said to keep my commandments, but see, it becomes too hard to, to do these things. We don't want to do the things that will make the spouse happy so we become happy so we go on down to the corner of come over and see me and I'll make you feel any way you want to feel instead of taking care of what's in our house instead of taking care of our spouse how many heard stories of men coming home early from work to surprise their wife for something and find out they're the one that got surprised because she was in the bedroom with another man and no doubt she hugged his neck and kissed him on the way out the door he said, I love you, baby. Or is it just a benefit? Huh? I love you. Or is it just the house that you provided? I love you, or is it just the clothes that you give me? See, all these things come from your spouse that you can't find down on the corner. Now, you may say, Johnny, you're preaching hard, but it was God that called him a whore. It was God that called my God. See, we can't put up with things. It's too hard to deal with her. And a lot of times we stay in a relationship because why? It may like may look good to the family. It may, oh, I'm a married man, or I'm a married woman and I got it better than my sister and my brothers got it. And, 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 and that's why we sit in the church house sometimes. I'm a Christian. Oh, I'm going to heaven. I love you, baby. Or is it just the benefits? We're looking good to our neighbors. Oh, come on. We're looking good to Ma and Paul. Oh, come on. We're looking good to the assembly. Oh, my God. We're in love with the benefits only. Because we don't want to do what it takes to make God happy. You say, well, you're preaching Old Testament. Okay, we'll jump over here to the New Testament just to make some of you happy. We'll go over here to John chapter 14. And we're going to read verse 15. 
It says, this is Jesus. This isn't God speaking no more. This is Jesus, okay? So this is New Testament. Verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's verse 15. Let's read above that. It says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. You see what he gave before? He said what I want in return? I give you my name that you can ask anything and you'll have it. Now, if you love me, keep my commandments. And you say, well, now, Johnny, they're talking about in the Old Testament about worshiping idols of stone and worshiping idols of, of, of wood. That has nothing to do with me. Oh, really? It says also in the Bible that they will become lovers of self more than lovers of God. Yeah? So what you're worshiping is, is your own self because it becomes too hard sometimes to please that husband or wife just like it becomes too hard sometimes for us to please God huh? see I can go down here to the corner and spend me 20 or 30 bucks and make me feel so so good huh? and I ain't got to put no work into it huh? see when God starts talking about to love your neighbor, that's work. When he starts talking about to pray for them that despitefully use you, that's just too much for me to stay in this relationship. When he starts talking about love your wife as Christ loves the church, that's too much. I can't pour myself out into this relationship like that. He's asking for too much, but yet we want to reap the benefits of Calvary. We want to reap the benefits of a Savior that went and prepared a place for us that where he is we may be also we just my God we are just like the children that's out here in, in the promised land with trees hills milk and honey I love you Jesus or is it just the benefits I'm sure there's at least one more person in here besides me that's got someone that hates them How many times this week have you got down and prayed for them? Let me ask you. Don't show your hands. I don't want to embarrass nobody. How many of you have got down and prayed for them? Huh? Oh, we got so many excuses of why we don't serve God the right way. We got so many excuses why we walked away from God. It means nothing. It means nothing. I don't care who's talked about you. I don't care who's hurt you. I don't care who hates you. When you stand in front of God, you'll have empty pockets. You'll have no excuse. Huh? I would hate to think that someone that lives like me, breathes air like me, had the power over me to send me to hell. Huh? I'd hate to think that. Somebody that puts their pants on the same way I do every morning, one leg at a time, ain't got the power to send me to hell. My God said nothing shall pluck you out of the hand of God but you yourself. Huh? I love you, baby. See you tonight. Going on down to the corner. Now come over and see me sometime. See, we become lovers of ourselves more than we're lovers of God. Huh? Yeah, come on, John. No, I, I, you know, I'm, a, I'm not just making stuff up. I'm, I'm reading something to you. And the thing is, we think we got so many people fooled. I guarantee you that wife knows something's in the air. He ain't like he used to be. But I got confidence in him. Huh? Let me read over here in John 21, verse 15 through 17, and I'll show you just how much you got God fooled. Huh? Starting at the 15th verse of chapter 21 in John, it says, So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, Feed my lambs. 
Simon, and he said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And he said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my sheep. Then he said to him a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved. He was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. What I got out of this scripture, when I kind of ran it down in the Dake's Bible a little bit, and Peter knew that he knew. Without him ever saying it, Jesus knowed. Just like, <laughs> he, ain't it really funny how he said it three times to him when Peter had denied him three times before? Huh? Are you sure you're not going to fall back into that trial, into that temptation again? Are you sure you're not going to go back and deny me? Let me ask you three times, Peter, because yes, I know you love me now, and I knew that you loved me before, but oh, I think it was just the benefits before, because if it wasn't, you would have never went down to the corner of come over and see me sometimes and let me feel, make you feel good. It felt better to deny Christ. Amen. I won't have to suffer. Just speaking of that three times, my wife, when she gets ready to go out the door, if she doesn't tell me on the average of six or seven, if maybe ten times, I love you before she gets out that door, I'm not standing here. But the thing about it is she'll never have to say it to me. She would never have to say it to me because what she does Proves that she loves me. Amen. Oh, we got the mouthpiece down. huh? We got the lip service intact. I love you, baby. Or is it just the benefits? Huh? She forgot her keys last night, or forgot her phone, had to come back in the house, and got four more I love yous out before she went back outside. I'm not complaining, believe me. <laughs> That's music to my ears. <laughs> But the thing, about, oh, the thing about it, when I leave the house in the morning and I tell her that I love her, my mind's on her through the whole day. I'm not stopping over to come over and see me sometime or let me make you feel good. My mind stays on her the whole day until I get back home and tell her I love her again. She would be with me today, but she's sleeping right now because she worked last night. But she bought me this pretty shirt for my birthday. <laughs> I'm loving the benefits and her. Yeah. Huh? And the thing about it, because I love her, young man, I get the benefits. Yeah. Nothing's withheld. Huh? So when you start loving God and Jesus the way you're supposed to, there'll be nothing withheld. I don't know if anybody's liking this or not, and I really don't care because I went through pure hell to get this message, and I'm going to deliver it to, if it held up the devil or you. I love you, Jesus. Oh, I'm going out of the house now. My neighbors watch me going to Sunday school, going to morning worship. Oh, it's Wednesday night. They know I go to church. I'm looking good. I'm looking good, but stinking in the nostrils of God. Huh? Stinking in the nostrils of God. Lovers of yourself more than lovers of God. Hallelujah, let me find my, I got flyer notes all over the place. Let's go over here to 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. I'm sorry, chapter 3, verse 1. But know this, are you ready? But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves. Happy Valentine's Day, Jesus. For men will be lovers of them own selves, lovers of money. They'll be boasters. They'll be proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, 
brutal, despisers of good, traitors of headstrong, haughty lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God, having a form of God, but denying the power of. If I have God and I have Jesus, I will love them that hate me. If I have God, love you, baby. If I have God and Jesus the way I say I do, I will pray for them that despitefully use me. Huh? I didn't know until I preached the last message here that jealousy was even a God. But didn't I not read in the scripture that when he looked at the gate that was around the tabernacle, the, the God of jealousy was at the gate. There's a big God that everybody worships right there. I'm so jealous of this and I'm so jealous of that. Man, I'm not jealous of nothing. I serve the same God you serve. And I love him. Huh? Lovers of God, not lover of my pleasure. Lover of God, not lover of myself. But we won't want to do these things because we want what feels good. Huh? Come on. All my married couple in the house today that's been married for a few years, you know without a shadow of a doubt, I'm telling the truth, that you've had to go through a little bit of pain to make her happy. I don't care if it's shopping. Huh? Or rubbing her crusty feet. No, I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> You got to go through a little bit of pain sometimes to get what you want. Am I, am I preaching it? But we don't want to. It's so much easier to go down to the corner, come over and see me sometime, Avenue, and let me make you feel good street. Huh? Too much work involved. The only thing we got down pat, the only thing we can do is get dressed and come to the house. Huh? That house ain't nothing but a dwelling place. So then what happens? What happens when, when this spouse gets found out that they're cheaters? Huh? Have you ever noticed when someone gets caught and the wife or the husband says, it's over? It's over. That husband is saying, well, we, 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 we can work this out. You're going to throw me away? After this house I put you in, after this automobile I let you drive, after our four kids we raised, you're going to put me out? All that's good, but I never had you. Huh? I never had you. Yes, I had the house and the money and the bank account, but I didn't really want that. What I wanted was you. Let me read this. It'll make sense to you. Didn't I? Didn't I take care of you? Didn't I do your laundry all these years? Didn't I prepare your meals all these years? Come on. Huh? Let me read over here in Matthew chapter 7, verse 22. Verse 22 of chapter 7 of Matthew, it says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name. And they will declare to them, and, and I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. King James Version says, you worker of iniquity. You built my house. Huh? You, you housed me for years. You fed me. But I never had you. Easy street. Make me feel good Avenue had you. Huh? Come on. So I mean, are you are are you doing this in vain? Coming to the church, putting on the parade, claiming that you love God. Are you doing it in vain? Or are you really loving God and not the benefits? You know, today's Valentine's Day, Lovers' Day, and you really need to ask yourself. Am I in love with Jesus like he's in love with me? Am I giving to Jesus or am I just making excuses of why I am what I am? Huh? Let me tell you something, partner. Those excuses will run dry on you. When judgment day comes and you stand there before God, 
I don't care what your excuse is, it won't mean nothing. Are you in love today? This Valentine's Day, are you in love with Jesus like he's in love with you? We search that out today. Let's have a little talk with Jesus. And say, God, let me fall in love with you like you're in love with me. I believe if you have love for God in your heart, it's going to show. No excuses. I got rededicated three times yesterday reading these scriptures. That's how convicted of me. Huh? So today, ask yourself, am I in love with God? Am I loving Jesus or do I just love his benefits? Amen. Thank you, Brother Johnny. Let's give the Lord a great big hand clap. And let's all stand. You know, if, uh, if this message has touched your heart or if you don't feel like you love the Lord uh, the way you should, this altar is open. Let's just all come around the altar and uh, just have a good uh, time of prayer. Mm-hmm.